See you later. See you, Manny. We'll get some parts, guys. A few months back, before we were all forced inside, away from our friends, Nick went on a road trip to a swap meet a couple of hours away from the garage. He ended up not finding any of the parts on his list, and we put the footage on the shelf. But as usual, Nick recalled a few stories of glory days as the miles rolled past that day. And we got a couple of them on camera. I don't want to rush there now. I want to grab a coffee, enjoy a ride. I'm always in a rush in my life, you know? So let's uh, go to a slower pace. Plus, it gets you out of the shop, you know? I mean, it's, it's... No, it's nice to get out of the shop once in a while, man. And go on the road. You know, my Hellcat, when I drive it down the highway, you know, I have all my uh, both windows open, right? You hear the wind coming in. My 70 Challenger, all windows open, you don't hear the wind. You don't. I don't know why, it's such a big difference. It's a pleasure to drive that uh, Kowalski car, let me tell you. Yeah. It is a pleasure, man, let me tell you. Old cars. Yeah, the old cars, there's no wind factor, no wind noise when you're driving with the car. But the Hellcat, man, you think you're going through a storm, windstorm or something. <laughs> I hope they have a, a B-body Dana they can pick up. Man, I have to look for parts here and there, chase parts, get on mega parts, uh, internet, over here in Drummondville. Look at this, owning a shop, you gotta do a lot of running around, especially when you work with old cars. Yeah. You feel like a hunter now, you know what I mean? Exactly. You're going out hunting for parts. And they carry a rifle, a rifle, we carry money. <laughs> <laughs> to go pick up the parts, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I just hope, you know, we get there early enough that uh, when some people put on display, they're not sold right away. Of course, usually what I go after, everybody goes after. <laughs> yeah. That's and you know, you, and you know what I noticed in some cases? When people look at something, nobody buys it. When I go look at it and I have doubts about everybody it, wants everybody it. wants it. And I've noticed that in a swap meet. When I'm looking at something, everybody's looking at me and going, hey, if this guy wants it, there's a reason. I mean, I've been buying parts since 1974. You know, since the day I bought the Hemikuda and the Challenger then, of course, right before uh, the Hemikuda. I was always into old parts. Back in the lane days. Yeah, I remember I remember when I first bought my first Dana at Jack's Auto Scrap. Really? I paid $125. Wow. wow. Man, that was in 19, I believe 1975. Well, back then, back then you would walk into a scrapyard and you would see all these old muscle cars. And you know what? That Challenger was up on the rack. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> it must have been a U-Code, V-Code, or Hemi car, I don't know. Yeah. But I saw the Dana. I go, yeah, I want to buy the differential. 125 bucks at yours. Next day, it's over, come by and pick it up. Yeah, today you would stay there and wait and pick it up right away. You exactly. won't come back the next day. It's fun to hear Nick remember the old days, looking for parts for his first cars. But then he cast his mind even further back to when he was still too young to drive and he was first bitten by the mechanic's bug. 13, 12, 13 years old, you know, we had a, a house in Utremont in, in the back alley next to my mother's garage was a little shack tin can garage and the floor was uh, the ground, there was not asphalt. And he, every time I walk out in the backyard and out through the alley, He'd be working on his car. It was a Vauxhall, he had two cars, a Vauxhall and an Envoy. And he, they didn't have jack stands, he had logs of wood, you know, six oh, inch by then, six inch. It did the 
jock. Yeah, right? yeah, he had a jock. He picked it up. He put the, the car in Logwoods. And he, for some reason, I don't know why, he always had a bucket of oil. Okay. He used to drain oil every time he was doing a job. And every, every time I walked into his garage, I had to walk, watch where I'm walking because, you know, I don't want to walk into a pail of oil. <laughs> and that's why I call him the oily man. And, and I asked him so many questions uh, week after, day after day, uh, week after day. I, I, I like to help him at the end. And every time I held him, I got oily hands, okay. you know, I got dirty. My mom used to say, why are you always getting oily? I said, I like to help the guy next door, yeah. you know? So was he was a, a he, 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 yeah. he was a mechanic. Was he a mechanic? I don't know, but uh, he knew how to work on the cars. Okay, okay. <clears throat> and uh, it was pretty interesting, you know, but uh, every time I would ask him a question, he would, he would answer me. Uh, English fellow, from uh, British. He was, okay. he was a British. Uh, <clears throat> and, um, and I'll never forget those logs. I always, you know, he used to jack it up. He told me, here, put the log here. I used yeah, to put yeah, the yeah. log there, and he would slowly bring down the car. I go, look at these woods, man. Look how strong these woods are, you know? Swell guy, man. And, and I remember one day he was doing all these pieces, putting it together. Then he, I see him turn the key. This is the best part. This is the best part. The car is sitting there. Put all the things together. And I see him turn the key. Then I see this fan turning. This is where I saw the first motor running. Okay. Okay, with the hood open, you know? Right, right, and, right. I, and I see pieces get together. And then I turn the key and I see it running on a slow idle. And the fan is turning. I go, look at that, he put a whole bunch of pieces together, and now he gets out of the car and it's running on its own. Wow. And I'm looking at, wow, this is magic, man. Yeah, yeah. What the hell? And that's where... He can I, think, I think that's where you <clears throat> that's where got, I got brought up to Yeah, this is where I got... And, uh, this is where I love the interest of us. Turning a key and you see something moving. Yeah, yeah. Then it's moving this big car, or, the, or you know, a little motor this big, and it's pulling this big car, you know? It was awesome. He moved away after. I believe he moved away. No, I know what happened. They sold the property next door. They sold the property next door, then he moved out because they, he didn't have a lease anymore. I remember, man. He was, was an older gentleman. Yes, yes. Very nice guy. There was also another guy, and I don't remember, was his name Joe? He used to have a 409. Remember? Yes, yes, yeah, he, he was there. was a, another guy from the hood, yeah, right? Yeah, he knew about performance. Okay. Joe, okay. big Joe, big Joe. He, uh, he was the, uh, the guy with the big muscles that pulled on engines out of the uh, engine compartment like nothing. Oh, really? He had a 409. <laughs> he was building a 409 in uh, Nova. In an Nova? Uh, in an old wow. Nova. And there were two Carters on it. And uh, I like, I like. he was a great guy. He, him too, he was teaching us all kinds of tricks. And uh, between the oily man and Joe, oh, I go, this, this is an awesome world, you man, with the automotive uh, industry. So you're learning, you know, the basics and the performance of, from one person to another. Then when you put them together, what do you got? You learn to be a muscle car guy. I remember like my neighborhood where I grew up with, there were uh, people addicted to uh, bad habits, uh, uh, clubs, pool rooms, drugs, fights. That was Robbery, the troubles, yeah. and you know, I we used to be in the lane, and I remember one guy coming in the lane. You know, I needed. He was associated with everybody. You know, with all these troublemakers. Then he came in the lane. He was looking at me working on the uh, Hemicuda. Yeah. Then he would ask me a few questions. He looked at the car. And goes, hey, bright green. You know, is that original? I said, yes. It came from the factory. Of that. And then of course, uh, he used to come every time, ask me questions, and he and he and then. He today became a car guy. he became a car guy. He's one of my buddies. And today he goes, Nick, because of you, I have the passion for these cars. Oh, okay. Okay? And it's true. And he's a man. He yes. says, Nick, because of you, I got away from these gangs. Yeah. And, and I, I saw you with this car. I fell in love with it. And you were, you were one guy, like, you stopped and answered all my questions. And that was exactly what the oil man did for me. Exactly, yeah. So I, I did the same for everybody else. And that's why when he gave me the uh, parts for my Kowalski, it's a gift, Nick, because what I've got today is you can't buy it. And there was a lot of people that uh, got into it with me. And as we all grew up, we all grew into the same passion. Having found his passion so early in life, it didn't take Nick long to find a job at the service station, right around the corner from the alley where he met the oily man. I was working at the gas station and uh, all my friends with their cars would be there, okay? Now we're open to serve gas. I'm the only employee at night, right? 
and we're all there. And this customer drives up to the gas pump, and of course we have the uh, the cord. It rings the bell. It rings the bell. And then you know we're all in the garage, a whole bunch of cars in the shop, and the bell rings, and no one goes out to serve him. Nobody went out to serve the customer. And who do you think it was? My boss. Oh, Pilat. <laughs> I remember Pilat. Yeah, it was yeah. Pilat, the boss. And what a generous guy. He used to walk in, and then he walked into the garage, and he goes, hey, Nick, Nick, that's what he called me. Hey, Nick, Nick, what, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that was too much. And don't forget, I used to go to school all day, and at 6 o'clock, I'd go work at Esso till 11 o'clock. Wow. And I was only a gas pumper. I used to serve gas only. He had a car in the shop, and I see on the on the counter a brand new water pump. And I was wondering, oh, that's an Oldsmobile? That's an Oldsmobile water pump, and I'm sure that is for this car. So I'd stay there that night while I'm serving gas. I'd open the hood, take, out, uh, take off the water pump, replace it, check it, fix it, and then get it going. Even though it was midnight, one o'clock in the morning, even though it took me a long time, it doesn't matter. And I was paid as a gas pump. Uh, I, I was yeah, learning yeah. to be mechanics, you know, serving gas. And then uh, I finished the job. And then my boss would walk in and I put yeah. a note, job done on the windshield, yeah, right? Yeah. And then uh, he was so happy and then he would check my work. And it, it was always uh, okay, he always would check that out. And uh, he was freaking out, like, you know, here I am, ping, I got a service station, I come in the morning, the job's done. And then after that, he used to give me a job every night. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, Nick, while you're serving guys, you can fix that car. That's it. And I love that, eh? I love that. I had the passion to do that. I also worked on the tow truck. Okay. And anyway, I remember one day, it was so, so, so cold. Uh, somebody called us for to boost the car up the street. It was a big, Pontiac station wagon, okay. the Pontiac motor. I'll never forget this. So uh, I went to boost the car. We got it started, and the customer just revved. He revved it so much, and he's revving it, revving it. I told him, sir, sir, don't rev it so high. You don't need to rev it high. Ah, it's okay, I do it every morning. Oh my God. And then, then I left. He came to the garage with the car, and of course, He's telling my boss, hey, uh, I hear a noise in the motor. Can you fix it? <laughs> clack, 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 clack. And, I, and I told the guy, I think this guy's spun a bearing. My boss goes out, checks that out, brings it into the shop. We're looking at it. And yeah, it is a spun bearing. And I told my boss, this guy, when I started, man, he had it on the floor. <laughs> no, no, he didn't do that. Yes, he did. And I was telling him not to. And then, uh, of course, the customer was telling uh, Pilat, Gitano Pilat, yeah. telling him, yeah, don't worry, I do it every morning. I don't have any issues. Why have an issue today? Uh, and then at the end, we uh, had to buy a used engine and uh, replace it, yeah. I remember uh, there was New Year's Eve night, New Year's Eve. And I was supposed to close at 10 o'clock. And I was serving gas only, it was night, New Year's Eve. You know, I'm a young guy, I'm single. Yeah. What am I gonna do, right? So he goes, Nick, you wanna work on New Year's Eve? I said, sure, why not? I was supposed to close at 10 o'clock. You know what time I closed that night? One o'clock. Really? Yeah, because I was busy serving guys like crazy. Right, right. So right. then the boss, when he came in a few days later, he tells him, Nick, uh, you made a lot of sales. Yeah, I told him I finished at one o'clock because everybody's buying guys that night. <laughs> Nobody want to get out of the cars, uh, you know? It. Yeah, yeah. I was the only one open. Plus, I was getting good tips. Why would I want to go home? Exactly. You know, the customers were coming in, even though it's midnight, 12.30, yeah. I was just serving the customers. If you're on the highway, you know, uh, here in Quebec, Ontario, every stop you make, you always find a Tim Hortons. True. Is that, is that something or what, eh? Yeah. I mean, how many stores are out there? Tim Hortons, here we come. So let's go through the uh, drive-thru, pick up a coffee. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, we got our coffees. Thanks for coming along on the ride today. And thanks for watching Nick's Garage. We'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.
And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Vix Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.